All right, so this series is going to be about economic history, uh, talking primarily like post-enlightenment, this is the first lesson, so let's get into it. So economic history is the study of uh, kind of the history of economic thought and how the certain schools of economics have developed over time uh, and kind of who were responsible, who were the key thinkers behind it, what was the context uh, and put, putting that all together to have kind of a historical understanding of the uh, development of economic thought after the Enlightenment, starting with uh, Adam Smith really in 1776 with his book on the wealth of nations. So, let's have a look at Menger's abstract dedu deductive method. In the 19th century, there was a battle of methods in economics between Karl Menger's Austrian School of Economics, which used the abstract deductive method, and Gustav von Schmoller's German Historical School, which utilised an empirical inductive method. Menger showed the fundamental difference between exact and empirical analyses. The exact law of demand, if the need for a commodity increases, then its market price will always increase. The empirical law of demand, if the need for a commodity increases, then its market price will usually decrease. And the goal of Menger's exact theoretical mm -hmm. science was to find the simple elements of social or natural phenomena and then by putting together their mutual relations, correlations and interplays, uh, using these to explain more complicated phenomena. So Menger kind of used his observations, collated uh, them together in his models and then used math to kind of predict the future based on like past events and observations in the field of economics. So kind of like uh, the stuff that we're going over in our statistics course. So, uh, Smoller's criticisms of Menger. Smoller interpreted Menger's exact and empirical approach in terms of abstract deduction and the empirical deductive method uh, as flawed. He argued that deductive and inductive methods supplement each other. He critiques Menger for restricting economics to dealing with only value, price and money, while ignoring other aspects of social and economic life, such as individual aspirations or personal drives of uh, the people in the Austrian models. A consequence of this hostile debate between Schmoller and Menger uh, would be the exclusion of adherence to Menger's doctrines in Germany, so they weren't really taken seriously or allowed to publish many papers in German universities, such so slowing down progress in the field of economics. Uh, Menger and Schmoller's differing views. More contemporary Austrian economists, such as Friedrich von Hayek and Ludwig von Mises, think the abstract method, uh, which utilises math, is more important in the study of economics. They think math is objective and simplifies economics. And in a way it does, because you can kind of quantify concepts such as uh, I don't know, the the way an individual values something so you can quantify that with a utility function and then put these utility functions together for various uh, budget constraints to get stuff like demand curves, uh, which is obviously extremely important when it comes to economics. Both Menger's and Smollett's interpretations are important, however. 
Note that deduction is the process of reasoning from one or more premises to reach a logically certain conclusion. Ergo, abstract deduction cannot be verified or falsified by experiment. Uh, this view is used by Menger. And induction is the process of reasoning in which observations are viewed as supplementing more or less strong evidence for the truth or conclusion. Ergo, empirical induction is based on empiricisms, but its conclusions do not acquire absolute and inevitable validity. And this was the view supported by Smoller. So that's kind of a more simplified way of looking at the different views these uh, rival schools of economics had. So, uh, the climetric revolution explained briefly. Abduction is when a researcher encounters something they did not expect and formulates a theory to explain this unexpected phenomenon. Since the 1950s, the formal models and the economic mod method has greatly improved the study of the past, giving rise to a new economic history. This is called the cliometric revolution, but the influence of history on economics has generally declined, and most contemporary economists rather uh, prefer to just look at math and uh, and think about things objectively using models and kind of data gathered from historical uh, precedents to create these models rather than looking at economic history itself. Uh, so clearly they're more closely descended to smaller than Menger. Sorry, they're more closely descended from Menger than smaller. Apologies. Be that as it may, both Robert Fogel and Douglas North won a Nobel Prize for their research in economic history. So, it's clearly still a respected field, although its influence is on the decline in recent years. Now, we mainly looked at the 19th century there and the debate between the Austrian and German schools, which are probably the schools that have most contemporary relevance to the field of economics, uh, other than obviously the Keynesian school, which is also extremely important, uh, or the monetarist and business cycle theorists. But the Austrian school has obviously superseded the German school in recent history. Uh, that's not to say we won't be looking at more classical economists like David Ricardo or Adam Smith fairly soon, but it's good to just go over the 19th century first to get it out of the way and to give kind of a basic understanding of the Industrial Revolution for when we talk about more recent economists like Hayek or Frieden in more detail, or having a look at Thomas Scholl, who is uh, more contemporary. So that's it for the first uh, lesson on economic history. Thank you.